What you don't know can kill you. Hi, I'm Nanette. Welcome back to Narcissism Exposed. So let me ask you all a question. Now, this is more of a rhetorical question. If you knew something really bad was going to happen to you tomorrow at 12 o'clock, would you make sure you were protected and taken care of and in, in a safe place? Of course, the answer is, of course you would. However, you don't know what you don't know. And with regards to a narcissist and running into one of the, those types of people that are demonically driven and unbeknownst to you, you get entangled with that person. Well, today I'm going to read to you a comment somebody wrote to me and we're going to cover some scriptures to help moving forward, help you never to trip over a narcissist again. So this gentleman wrote to me about somebody he had married and it starts off like this. Hello, Nanette. I'm a Christian and I'm also a registered nurse with a specialty in behavioral health. I even taught clinical nursing for my state university for behavioral health. I thought I knew what a narcissist was until I married one. She as well was an RN, registered nurse, a Christian, and taught nursing school with behavioral health. Now, how many of you said to yourself, oh, you know, I know what a narcissist is. Uh, aren't they like really conceited people and they're always looking in the mirror and they're always like mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, like kissing themselves and wanting all kinds of attention and glory. Well, you know, that's all we really knew about it. We didn't know anything else. So again, what you don't know, you don't know. And then some of you even knew that the word narcissism, which was coined somewhere around the early 1900s by psychology, is based on Greek mythology where a young man just was in love with himself when he saw his image in a pond and he couldn't, he couldn't move away from his image till he finally passed away. He died, right? But we have all found out that it is so much more than that because now we are not only seeing the, getting the awakening of the characteristics and syndromes, which are so universal across the globe, but those of you who are on this channel where I share Holy Scripture are getting enlightened by the truth of God's Word. Now we know that it's so much more as it says in Ephesians chapter 6 verse 12, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. That's right. So it's not just, oh, well, you know, that person, if they start like combing their hair all the time or they're checking themselves in the mirror uh, or they're bragging a little bit about the, oh, they must be a narcissist. And then here next to that, that person, you see somebody that, you know, seems very kind of um, maybe average looking, doesn't look in the mirror. They look humble. Well, guess what? You don't know what's under that cover, do you? Because basically the devil has hidden what's really going on in these narcissists with that Greek mythology. That's right. So many people never get past the, well, I guess if they're bragging and they're conceited and they're looking in the mirror all the time, I guess that's what a narcissist is. And they never suspect that that well-educated person, that person who seems to have a great career, that responsible woman or man, uh, the person that always volunteers, they never understand that that could be a potential narcissist because of the victim that they hide out in their little prison that many people never become aware of until you become a victim yourself. 
And just like the misrepresentation of the Greek mythology, only honing in on somebody being conceited or bragging about themselves, the devil also hides behind psychology. That's right. How many people think, well, Oh, I guess it must be a mental disorder. And, you know, I guess we just have to keep working with that narcissist. I guess we have to stick it out, you know, because um, all that abuse, all of that belittling, all of that devaluing, all of that verbal, mental, emotional, and physical abuse, I guess we have to put up with it because, hey, it's just a mental disorder. So the devil hides behind that too. And he's laughing all the way to that person, almost getting to the place of wanting to commit suicide because they don't know what they're really dealing with. And then the other thing that he mentioned in his comment was that she was a Christian. Look, many narcissists are self-professed Christians. And I emphasize self-professed. Hey, I'm a Christian. I love God and I love everyone. And you know what? Anybody can say those words, but what God looks at are, is the heart, the intentions. What is the intention of that person? So a lot of times, Narcissists hide out in those in churches and in the pews of those churches and blend in with God's people looking at who he or she can catch as their prey as their next victim. So here you go. This gentleman saw this woman. She had a great career. She was a responsible person. She was a Christian. However, that's another mask that the narcissist uses and that the devil hides behind. So we see the three areas in this comment that the devil hides out in when working through that narcissist. The misrepresentation of, oh, hey, this just has to be somebody who's always conceited and bragging. That's all a narcissist is. Or number two, psychology, it's a mental disorder. Oh, we should just write them off. It's a mental disorder. Just excuse all that evil behavior. And then the third thing, they're a Christian. Just because somebody says they're a Christian, that does not mean that they don't have a black heart and that they are lying to you. You must understand that Gaining more knowledge with God's word and growing in your power of discernment is critically important for you to be able to walk in this world and avoid those toxic, evil people. Look, it says in Titus chapter 1 verses 15 and 16, everything is pure to those whose hearts are pure, but nothing is pure to those who are corrupt and unbelieving because their minds and consciences are corrupted. They claim to know God, but by their actions, by their victimizing of you, of their prey, right? They deny him. They are detestable, disobedient, and unfit for doing anything good. Now, those are powerful words from God's holy scripture and God speaks truth. This gentleman goes on to say, the relationship broke me down, wore me out to the point I wanted to end my own life. I thought I was going crazy. And how does that narcissist drive people crazy or drive people to the point of wanting to end their own lives because they, they have no clue with what they're dealing with. So the narcissist has some favorite tactics and strategies, right? So they love to set you in confusion. They love to actually shift blame and make you feel like the guilty person all the time. They love to throw you off balance, change the subject, do a word salad where you may bring up some a point of where you guys need to talk about an issue that you're observing. They will immediately deflect and then they'll start talking about something else or something you did three months ago or hey, I saw you do this, blah, 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 right? And that's kind of a word salad that they do. 
Or how about gaslighting you, telling you, hey, you don't know what you're talking about. Oh, that never really happened. I think you're misremembering or stonewalling. You're trying to have a conversation with the narcissist and they just give you this blank look or they just don't respond or they walk away, right? Or how about ghosting where you don't hear from them for days or even weeks. You don't know where they are. You don't know what they're doing. You have no clue. They leave you in the dark. You know, there's a fantastic verse of scripture in God's word and it's in Proverbs chapter 17, verse 22. And it says, a merry and joyful heart does good like a medicine. But in contrast, a broken or crushed spirit zaps a person's strength and dries up the bones. Do you hear that? How many of you have suffered with a broken and crushed spirit from that narcissist to where you can't even move, you're paralyzed, you can't even think straight anymore. You know, when bones are dried up, they can't work very well, can they? So you see the analogy, the imagery here is very, very powerful and we need to take this seriously. And regarding this gentleman's ex-wife now, there's another great verse of scripture in Proverbs chapter 12, verse four, and it says, a worthy and virtuous woman. Now, aren't you men, men out there, aren't you looking for that virtuous and worthy woman? That's right, and you know what, you deserve her. You deserve God's best. You deserve someone just like you and never ever settle. And it goes on to say, this worthy and virtuous woman is the crown of her husband. But here's the contrast, a disgraceful wife who causes shame is as rottenness in his bones. There's the bones analogy again, rottenness in his bones. Do you see the powerful words God is using here to show you that if you choose unwisely or you have not enlightened yourself to this kind of toxic person or you ignore the red flags, this shameful woman is going to be as rottenness to your bones. And this gentleman talks about just how close he got to killing himself. And he goes on to say, the same month that it was over, I was able to hear from God and feel his presence. God delivers. God never leaves you out in the lurch with that narcissist. And he goes on to say, we parted our ways in 2019, but recovery is still going. I've been listening to what you have to say in your videos, and I must say that your messages are so very healing to my soul. You know why? Because I include God's word. That is the healing balm. That is what's going to touch your soul. That is what's going to touch the depths of your heart is the truth of God's word. And he goes on to say, your teaching way and knowledge of the spiritual in practical application with verifying Bible verses together has helped to minister to me and help me to grow. Thank you so much. You know, that's what we want. We want two things. We want to heal. Once we've been enlightened, we want to heal. And then we want to grow. That's what we want to do. We want to heal and we want to grow. When we can heal and when we are ready to grow, then we can get back on our path of truth and righteousness and destiny and move forward with your valuable life. There's two fantastic verses that I'm going to end this video with. And the first one is in Proverbs chapter 11, verse nine. And it says with their mouths, the godless destroy those closest to them, but through knowledge, the righteous escape. Do you see the beautiful contrast here? I want to read that again because it's so powerful with their mouths. Whose mouths? 
the narcissists, the toxic evil people, the ones who are demonically driven with their mouths, the godless destroy those closest to them. You know, God's word calls the tongue like a fire. That's right. That tongue could either be used to bless you or to curse and destroy you. And the, the narcissist chooses the latter, doesn't he or she? And, but the contrast here, but through knowledge, the righteous escape. You see in this gentleman's comment, once he heard God and felt his presence and then received Holy Scripture from these videos, he was able to escape not only just physically, because look, many of you have detached from your ex-narcissist. You either got divorced or you, you moved out of their home or your home or they took your home. You understand what I'm going with this. So many of you are not physically with that ex-narcissist. However, I wonder how many of you are still letting them drag you down and put you in pain and suffering with your thoughts and your emotions. You see, you, it takes Holy Scripture for you to be able to heal mentally, emotionally, and spiritually, and then to be able to grow and move forward with Holy Scripture. And I want to leave you with this last verse. Look, the more knowledge of God's Word you're going to get, the more you're going to power up, the more you're going to be able to engage your your discerning of spirits and you're going to be walking like a powerful child of God that you have been made to be. And it says, my people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. Again, the more Holy Scripture you put on, not only just regarding narcissists, that's, they're not our whole world because the devil hides out in other types of toxic, evil people as well. So these Holy Scriptures, the, this is your food for life. This is what's going to help you to grow. This is what's going to help you to move forward. This is what's going to keep your eyes enlightened to the truth of God's Word that sets you free. So I want you to leave your comments down below. If you have any prayer requests, please leave those as well. Know that I love you and pray for you every day. And if you found this helpful, do hit the like button. And if you haven't already subscribed, do hit the subscribe button. And don't forget to hit the notification bell so you'll be notified the next time I put out a video. And until next time, walk in peace and be blessed in your hearts.